Sam's Bear, written by Meryl Hamad, Ph.D., and Rob Collins, illustrated by Marianne Snow. National Indian and Inuit Community Health Representatives Organization. Sam's Bear, Sam's Bear. Hey, Sam, sun's up. Time for you to wake up, too. It's a school day today. Sam is my very bestest friend in the whole world. I love him so much. I always take good care of him. Every morning, I help him brush his teeth. I help him get dressed. And I help him eat his breakfast. I wish I were a bit older so that I could walk Sam to school. Quite often, Sam comes home in a bad mood after his long day at school. Sometimes he has a huge tantrum. I don't mind getting all wet and slobbery when he cries. I understand that Sam's brain boo-boo causes a lot of problems for him. See, his brain was hurt even before he was born. I'll tell you a story. Once upon a time, Sam was just a tiny baby seed inside his mom's belly. He was so small, his mom didn't even know she was expecting a baby yet. So she and Sam's dad went out and visited their friends. They both drank alcohol and smoked. After a baby is born, the brain keeps growing for a few years. What does a child need to build a healthy brain? A loving home? Care and attention from kind adults? To feel secure? Games, puzzles, stories and songs? And healthy food? Sam's mom told me that the more we all love and care for Sam, the better his hurt brain will grow from now on. So I gave him lots of kisses. I help him with his homework. I play games with him. I built things with him. I read stories to him. And of course, I watch over him at night. I know that Sam's brain is hurt and works differently, but I also know that every single day we can all help him build his brain a bit stronger. Sam's Bear, a guide for parents and teachers. Brain development, what affects it in the early years and what we can do to promote it. Do you know the unborn baby's brain and spinal cord already starts to develop at three weeks after conception? By the 17th week of pregnancy, the unborn baby already has 1 billion brain cells. The brain continues to develop throughout pregnancy and even after birth. The brain is the only organ in the body that is not completely formed at birth. Here, we explain how the brain is formed and grows both before and after birth. From this information, we hope that you will have new appreciation and respect for the amazing organ, and that you will be inspired to help protect and nurture the developing brains of all the children in your life. Appreciating the brain. Brain cell neurons and connection synapses. Did you know that the brain consists of millions of brain cells called neurons? Did you know that everything we see, hear, feel, taste, and smell, and all of our movements, thoughts, memories, and feelings are a result of messages that pass from one brain cell to another? There is a tiny gap where each brain cell connects with its neighbor, called a synapse. For a message to make its way across this gap, it needs certain chemicals called neurotransmitters. 
trillions of connections, synapses, between brain cells form the wiring of the brain. Like telephone wires or cables, synapses and neurotransmitters that pass across the gaps to their neighbor cells form the chemical connections in the brain. Taken together, brain cells and their connections make up what scientists call the architecture, structure, and function working of the brain. The number, organization, and strength of these connections influence every aspect of brain functioning, such as being able to recognize sounds, letters, and numbers, controlling emotions, and maintaining relationships. For our brain to work well, we need both solid brain architecture and good chemical connections. Neither one is good enough on its own. Brain cells develop very fast before birth. After birth, brain development consists mainly of wiring and rewiring the connections between the existing brain cells. New brain cells are mainly added in the parts of the brain that store memories. Children whose connections are not formed properly can face big challenges throughout life. Causes include prenatal exposure to alcohol and other drugs, industrial chemicals, heavy metals, injuries, any kind of abuse, some infections, poor diet, or severe stress. Imagine, just imagine what your life would be like with damaged brain cells. What sensations such as touch, warmth, cold, softness, etc. would you miss? What movements and physical activities, for example, sports, walking, dancing, etc. would you miss? And so on for thoughts, memories, and feelings. What would you miss? See how dependent we all are on our brain cells. See why it is so important to protect them right from the time they first start to form in the womb. What do different parts of the brain do? There are three parts in the brain. The brain stem, cerebellum, and cerebrum Any or all of these parts of the brain may be damaged before or after birth. The brain stem is formed first and controls essential basic body functions, including breathing, heartbeat, temperature control, thirst, hunger, and sleep. Imagine what life would be like if you were born with damage to your brain stem. Actually, you probably wouldn't even be alive. The cerebellum. The cerebellum, at the base of the brain, just above the back of the neck, controls the regulation and coordination of movement, posture, and balance. Imagine what life would be like if you were born with a damaged cerebellum. How might you walk, skip, run, dance, sit, play basketball, etc. if you had damage to this part of the brain? Cerebrum. The cerebrum, or cerebral cortex, is the largest part of the brain and is the decision-making center. It continues to develop until we are in our mid-twenties. It consists of four separate lobes, each responsible for different functions. The frontal lobe determines personality, emotions, judgment, impulse control, language, etc. The prenatal lobe helps us to understand what we see and feel and processes information about the environment around us, like distance and position of objects. The temporal lobe controls hearing and the ability to recognize words and affects memory. Finally, the occipital lobe is the visual center of the brain. Imagine what life would be like if you were born with a damaged cerebral or cerebral cortex. 
Just look back at the functions of each lobe and imagine what if my frontal, parietal, temporal, or occipital lobe were damaged? How would my life be different? What can damage the brain before birth? Note that in all cases below, the damage may be to the unborn baby's developing and multiplying brain cells, the brain architecture mentioned before, and or to brain chemicals, mostly neurotransmitters. Damage to either the structure of brain cells or the function flow of information between brain cells of the brain can be devastating. Damage to both is even worse. Brain damage from alcohol. The unborn baby is most susceptible to substances such as alcohol, nicotine, street drugs, and medication during the first trimester, that's one to three months of pregnancy. This is a serious problem because like Sam's mother, many parents don't even realize that they are pregnant until several weeks or even months into their pregnancy. Alcohol that a pregnant person drinks directly affects the unborn baby. Approximately one third of all babies born to alcohol abuse parents will develop fetal alcohol syndrome disorder, FASD, causing central nervous system problems, including attention deficit disorder, lower scores on intelligence tests, and developmental delays. There is a severe risk of the baby being born with a small brain these children may also have growth problems, joint, limb, and heart malformations, a risk of low birth weight, and facial abnormalities. There is no cure for this syndrome. The damage is irreversible. Brain damage from nicotine and street drugs. Nicotine in tobacco and cigarettes slow the growth of brain cells and interferes with neurotransmitters in the brain. Children exposed to nicotine before birth can have developmental delays, poor learning, and behavioral problems. Cannabis, or marijuana, is able to cross the placental barrier. Children born to parents who have used cannabis in pregnancy tend to have poor verbal skills, problems processing information, memory difficulties, behavioral problems, and be smaller. Cocaine. Cocaine use in pregnancy can disrupt the placement of brain cells in the cortex, the formation of connections and brain chemistry. These children may have a small head. Note, these are just examples of some drugs that can harm an unborn baby. Even some prescription medicines taken by a pregnant person can cause brain damage. Please check with your healthcare worker before you take any medicines or other drugs while pregnant. Your baby's whole future may depend on it. Brain damage caused by parents' environment and stress. The kind of social and physical environment a uh, parent experiences during pregnancy also affects the development of the unborn baby's brain and nervous system. For example, a stimulating, varied environment causes chemical changes in the parent that affects the, the development of the baby's retina, that part of the eye, and cerebellum, the part of the brain that controls movement, posture, and balance. On the other hand, studies show that high levels of stress during pregnancy can cause toxic stress. If a parent is exposed to violence, abuse, severe poverty, or other stressors, this can damage the unborn baby's brain development and functioning. What other factors can affect brain development before birth? There are still other factors that can harm an unborn baby's developing brain. If the parent has poor diet, not enough protein, calories, vitamins, and minerals, their baby might be born with brain damage. Brain problems might result from the baby having a genetic disorder, for example, Down syndrome an infectious disease, for example, toxoplasmosis, or complications of the rubella, or metabolic disorder, for example, phenylketonuria, 
Other toxic substances, apart from alcohol and other drugs discussed above, include industrial chemicals, environmental pollutants, heavy metals including mercury and lead, and pesticides. Please ask your healthcare worker for more details. How does the brain develop from birth to age six? Use it or lose it. After birth, new connections are formed while others are pruned away to ensure efficiency. This is called the use it or lose it principle. Only those connections and pathways that are often used will be kept or hardwired. Between birth and eight months, the connections are formed more quickly. There may be 1,000 trillion connections in the brain by eight months. After one year, pruning occurs more quickly. By age 10, a child has nearly 500 trillion connections, which is the same as the average adult. Pruning occurs until about 12 years, but the brain maintains flexibility for future learning. Early experience, both positive and negative, have a dramatic effect on this formation of connections. It is from early infancy to early childhood that these connections and pathways are made permanent. As we mature during these early years, the brain physically changes due to outside experiences. The first big growth spurt in the brain occurs from birth until about age six. Another big spurt occurs in the teenage years. The first three years see the fastest growth. At this time, the brain is most flexible or plastic, able to adapt to changing stimuli and prepared to learn. Just like exercising muscles, we strengthen our brain by exploring, learning, and thinking about what we are doing. If we don't exercise our brain, connections will be pruned back. How does stimulation affect brain development? Touch, talking, and things an infant sees, hears, tastes, and smells all build connections in the brain. If there are no new experiences, for example, if a child is neglected or left with little or no stimulation, connections are not formed and the brain remains small. The connections that are used most often are the strongest, so it is important for a child to get the right experiences during the early years. Think, what did Sam's family do to help him build connections in his brain? Children raised in deprived environments experience fewer sounds, colors, pictures, sights, and interactions. Their brain may be 20 to 30% smaller than those of children who grew up in stimulating environments with meaningful relationships. So the basic message is, provide children with the experiences and the positive safe environments they need. Whether a child goes to preschool or not, parents need to arrange for a variety of stimulating people and environments for their child to interact with. Exposures, for example, to songs, music, storybooks, toys, friends, and challenges such as puzzles, games, quizzes, will all help the brain to form new connections and maintain or strengthen existing ones. Note that re repetition, rereading the same storybook many times, or doing the same puzzle again and again, also strengthens existing brain connections. How does physical trauma affect brain development? Studies have found that severe childhood trauma, such as being emotionally, physically, or sexually abused, or witnessing domestic violence, can directly affect the way the brain functions. Traumatized children show physical symptoms of fear, such as high heart rates, high levels of stress hormones in their blood, problems sleeping more frequently, more often, and for longer periods of time than other children. Even after the threat has been removed, they have trouble returning to a normal, calm state, almost as if their brains are stuck in their reactions to the shocking experiences. Many of these children later develop emotional, behavioral, and learning problems. What else can affect brain development in the early years? As we saw in the section about brain development before birth, brain development in the child's early years may also be affected by genetic disorder, such as Down syndrome, infectious disease, such as complications of measles, encephalitis, meningitis, or metabolic disorder, for example, from phenylketonuria, 
as well birth injuries, car accidents, falls, shaken baby syndrome, and sports injuries, etc. can all cause physical injury to the brain of a baby or child. 10 things every baby and child needs for healthy brain development. Before you read the list below, think for yourself, what does a baby or child need for healthy brain development? Then compare your list with the one below. Interaction with responsive and sensitive caregivers. Loving touch and experience using all their senses, taste, smell, sight, hearing. A stable relationship with a parent or primary caregiver. Safe, healthy environment. Self-esteem. Quality care, meaning good food, personal hygiene, enough sleep, a stable routine, lots of attention, patience, and understanding. Communication. Play. That means time and space to explore and play. Music, including singing, humming, clapping, drumming. Reading. Did you think of other needs we could add to this list? Love, storytelling. How many of these needs do you think were being well met in Sam's case? How many of your child's needs are being well met? Which one or two of these points might need more attention to help your child develop an even better brain? How could you try to meet those needs in the future, starting right here, right now? Who could you ask for help with this challenge? Summary and conclusion. An unborn baby only goes through one pregnancy. We cannot go back and undo damage done during the very important early months of development in the womb. The kind of environment that a child is exposed to early on, both before birth and after, either positively or negatively affects the architecture and function of the brain. The unborn baby develops very quickly in the early weeks after conception. But this is the time when many parents, as we saw in the case of Sam's parents, might not even realize that they are pregnant. Therefore, all sexually active people of childbearing age have to assume that pregnancy is a real risk at any time, and they should take care of themselves by eating healthy, exercising, and avoiding stress and toxins. After birth, the quality and quantity of a child's interaction with parents, other caregivers, and their environments result in connections that determine how well the brain will be built over time. All children, whether they have brain damage or not, need to be raised in loving, nurturing environments with lots of stimulating experiences to help develop their brains. Environmental factors that can make a difference to a child include exposure to extreme stress, toxins, including alcohol and other drugs, diet, stability, relationships, and interactions with responsive caregivers. A child's capacity to learn for example, process and retain information, recognize patterns, listen and understand in the classroom, etc., is strongly influenced by the connections made in the brain in the first few years of life. Brain architecture is very adaptive in the early years. What this means is that the brain is very receptive and shapes or builds itself depending on stimuli that it receives. Brain architecture remains adaptive throughout life. Just as people who have had strokes can recover and learn to do many things they used to do, children who suffer early brain damage can grow and develop new skills. This ability to adapt is called brain plasticity. All children, regardless of what kind of damage, if any, their brains may have suffered before birth, deserve the best possible chance to develop their full potential. Did you think of other key points that should be in this summary? May the story of Sam and Bear inspire families everywhere to persevere with the very challenging task of raising the next generation with all the love, understanding, and patience that requires. I know that Sam's brain is hurt and works differently, but I also know that every single day we can all help him build his brain a bit stronger. Sam's Bear, written by Meryl Hamid. Ph.D. and Rob Collins, illustrated by Marion Snow, National Indian and Inuit Community Health Representatives Organization. Sam's Bayer.